my dear crafters, knitters, everybody who came to visit my channel today. And today, um, I hope short tutorial, I will tell you how I made this lovely sweater for Sphinx cat. As you know, they need some clothing. Um, and uh, I want today just explain you the, the principle, uh, how to make the um, clothes for pets and after after understanding this you can make sweater for any pet any size everything um which necessary i will try to cover on this uh, tutorial today uh this is a second sweater first one already gone i didn't make a video i'm sorry i i sometimes i just forget to um, film everything I'm doing and if you need some more detailed tutorials maybe I will start doing just let me know uh, this one um, is a smaller one first was a little bit bigger for a male cat with a weight of six kilos I think this one is a smaller for lady cat as you see by color and uh, design and uh, as I didn't send send it yet, I will do this um, this little covering and explaining you how I did it. This is a part of a tummy. This is little lovely sleeves, and this is the most beautiful part on on the back. And um, that's it. Let me let me give you a little bit of theory. Let's start um, how it was made. Uh, basically, I st it was made from top to uh, low part down. And uh, I started here. I cast on with Italian cast uh, some quantity of uh, stitches. And then I was going down basically doing the raglan which I will explain you in a moment, just let me... And um, after that I was uh, adding some stitches here because um, a Sphinx cat has a um, waistline a little bit larger than a, a, than a chest line. And then in the final I did this lovely um, shape here that will cover uh, it animal mm, till the tail and this uh, rib stitch will join this and and I hope that this will let the sweater stay on a place uh, and um, if you're not familiar with run raglan uh, let me make let me make you here some uh, some little drawing. Um. What we basically do, we have all our stitches, kind of, this is our neckline. You make your swatch and you count all um, you do all counting part by yourself. If you don't know to do this, I will make a separate video because it will be a little bit longer. When you know quantity of stitches you need for, for your chest, for your neck, for your waistline, you start knitting. Um, you, you get some quantity of stitches and basically regline um, for people and for animals are working a little bit different, but not much. Uh, basically what we have on a rug line, we have four rug line lines for human beings, for example. It looks like this. Sorry about this one. And here we have uh, sleeves. Here is uh, our back part. And here is our front part. 
And when we go, when we knit in in circles, we are basically going and we knit in all together, back part, front parts and sleeves all together. And that's why we don't have any seams. And this is my favorite way to, to knit uh, sweaters or jumpers. And what you basically do every time you're going around, you have these four lines. It depends if you can have one stitch here or two stitches or you, you can have some decorative element. It doesn't matter. From both sides here, in every second row, we increase stitches. We increase one stitch on each side and it gives us eight stitches increase every second row. And what we do, uh, you see, we increase from both sides of all these four lines. What the difference from for animal sweat? Here's our shoulders and our hands we have on sides of our body. Animals have their supposed hands, which are paws. They have them here, under the body. And then what we will do, we will move sleeves to another position. And then uh, what we have for animal sweater. We have some quantity of stitches. For example, on my last sweater, I had 48 stitches total. I cast on 48 stitches. It's depend of many things. If you have, if you want some uh, pattern on on your back side, usually I, I put some pattern on back side, and usually I use the rib stitch on a um, uh, tummy uh, part, uh, part because I like it to to be like better fit on animal. And what we do, we divide uh, this number. Usually it's di divided on four parts, um, uh, eight parts, and we have four parts for back side, like, uh, for example, 48 in eight, it will be six, um, six stitches, one part, and then supposed to have one part, six stitches for every, um, sleeve and then four parts on back and two two parts i think yes two parts on front six parts on back and one part on every sleeve but uh i saw that this doesn't work this way and what i used to do i first what i do i separate one stitch for for every raglan line. This will be my raglan lines. This will be my um, my sleeves here. Okay? Sleeve. Every uh, raglan line I will do with a one pearl stitch. Then I will put here in total, I will have four stitches for raglan lines. Then I will have 44 stitches. And uh, what I do with sleeves, I, I saw that if you put six stitches on sleeves, the sleeves will become very, very large. And what I used to do, if, if you have a very small sweater, you just can leave one stitch for sleeve for begin with. In my cat sweater, I had two sleeves for begin with because then you start to make increases and it's growing very fast. And as uh, our animals doesn't have uh, paws so uh, large like human um, arms, then, you know, you just do one, two, stitches if it's, it will be big sweater for big dog 
you can put three five stitches maximum uh, on this sweater I just put two stitches for sleeves then we have four stitches we take it out and we have uh, 40 stitches then this 40 stitches we are dividing in two but it will not be in two because these parts will not be the same but um, just grossly I don't I don't like to do too much uh, things basically probably the best idea to divide it in three and put one part here and two parts here but how I was doing this I have 20 as I have in the front I decided to put two by two rib stitch my rib stitch need to be um, symmetrical and as I have purl stitches here my rib stitch two by two need to have two knit stitches once on the one side and two knit stitches on another side and then what I do I see what quantity of stitches I need to have on my front front part and this need to be multiple by four because two by two we have four plus two or minus two and a closer number to this one I have multiple by four is 16 and then as my front part it, because I, I need to, to have it 20 is multiple by 4 as well but I need to have this part bigger than this part and then I'm going always on a to less number and then uh, close the number I found it's like 16 stitches um, 16 stitches and I need to for symmetry add or um, take out two stitches which I uh, opt to take out and I just leave 14 stitches here and then as I have 60, six stitches difference then I just put six stitches on my back part and I have 26 six stitches here when you do this you just uh, check one more time and all the stitches you have here need to give a sum of this 48 and then let's see 26 4 30 more 4 for raglan lines is 34 and plus 14 we have our 48 stitches then after this we are ready to go what we will do we will start our knitting from here because we are doing rounds here is a starting point of our rows and what we will do we will knit all the way in rounds and what we will do in every raglan line we will do increases every second row with one difference we will not increase stitches on the bottom part this part this our um, let's see this part here you see will go without increases all other raglan lines look you have one two three and four and as you see on this raglan lines on our back part here we have increases from both sides of raglan line and on this part of sleeve we have increases every second row but on this part 
we don't have any increases. This is the principal difference with a human rug line. And then what we do, in my case, I've got 20, uh, 48 stitches. I made 10 rows in a rib stitch one to one. Then I made one row just knit stitches, one row to, to have this lovely um, board. Uh, and it was one row in knit stitches, one row in purl stitches, and then one row in knit stitches as well. After this, I separate my stitches. You can put markers. Uh, and basically, we are going this direction. Here is start, starting point of all my rows. I'm starting here. And I'm going this way. I separate my my uh, 14 stitches in two, and then I have my seven stitches in a two by two rib stitch. Then I mark my first raglan line, and I make increase after it. Before I don't do this, do any increase. And I need to make increase after rug line line. Then I have two stitches of my um, sleeve. Then a next increase. I come to next rug line line and do increases from both sides sides of it. My rug line line. It's a one pearl stitch, which is not changing it's always going here and then I make my back part if you if you not very um, confident you just can try and make just plain uh, back part and then you can do something um, after uh, you can embroidery or something else here you have this part uh, I will put the graphic of this lovely uh, pattern here on the middle. Here I have two pearls. Here I have a little bride on two knit stitches and two pearl stitches again. And then all increasing stitches I'm doing in um, knit stitch. And my sleeves are made in knit stitch as well. And then I am just walking in the rows, doing my increases. Every second row, you do one row without increases, and every second row, I do increases of, uh, on both sides of my uh, raglan lines on uh, back sides and from on one side side of a uh, sleeve. You do increases, and you do this till your sleeves become uh, have. 24 knit stitches on, on um, your sleeves. Then you make these increases 11 times. If you count it, it's 11 increases, which gives us 24 stitches on sleeves. After that, you will separate your sleeves. You will put it on a... Um, I used to... Uh, put them on another mm, little piece of uh, yarn and uh, you will continue working in rounds down here then you will make more three increases here for the little bottom of, of cat and um, it will be done in every eight rows here. Let me. I have eight rows and increase, eight rows and increase. As you can see, eight rows and increase. Here I come on this part, and now I need to make my little uh, round finish here, which I I, I think looks amazing on um, animals. What you will do, you will start your short rows. Basically, 
how you do it. Uh, here you have your central part of your tummy and I usually start my um, short rows from this part. Then what you do? You go make your round as usual, continue with your uh, pattern here. You come here and you don't go to the end of your row. You finish your first uh, short row, you finish here on this point where where your uh, when where you have your um, pearl stitches. You stop here, you turn your work and go back again and here you stop again on the same point. After that you turn, you go around and you come here and stop two stitches before. You don't finish, you don't go, you stop two stitches before. You go around the way, uh, you go all the way back. You are walking in plain rows now, not in round. You go in all the way back and you come where you stopped previously and you stop two stitches before and then you go like this doing these rows and come in two stitches before your previous uh, turning point and you work like this with your turning points every time two, two stitches two stitches you come to this point I came to this point this was my finish point, finish uh, turn point. When I have this pattern, this pattern is, um, I have here nine stitches, nine stitches and one in the middle. After this, I start, go all around again. I do uh, my knit stitches and when you when you turn your work you you do nothing you and when when you start walking here you have kind of little stairs of every two point you have kind of angles and in every angle you just take a um, additional stitch to cover this hole and cross it you know uh, let me show you where I have this. Yeah, this stitch. You, need, you see, you twist it to don't have hole. And every two stitches, I have these twisted stitches in the middle. And then you have this lovely part. After this, I made the same thing as here. One row of knit stitches, one row, a row of pearl stitches. And uh, after that, I just go to rip stitch one to one and I close the work with a needle. Uh, that's it. I think I have a video where I show how I uh, close with a needle. After this, you, you come here, you put your sleeves on the needle, you get some additional points here the same way you uh, twist it. I had four additional stitches here down under the sleeve and uh, you do the same thing. One row of knits, one row of pearls and then uh, rib stitch. I think I, uh, I did one, one more row of knit stitches and after this I go to the uh, rib stitch and that's it. I hope that you understand. If you are absolute beginner, just leave me a comment if you would like to have some more detailed um, tutorial. And if you like it, I, I just hope that you will be able to make something like this. If you want detailed um, tutorial, I can probably make for you, if I don't forget. <laughs> and see you in the next video.